Hello, healthy moms. I could already see some people in the house before time. Thank you all so much for being this early. Welcome to Inyango once more. Please, if you are around, I want you to indicate with a comment or a like so that I can, I can acknowledge your presence. And please do not forget to share the video. This is going to help a lot of mothers. This is a topic which is going to help a lot of mothers. So please do not forget to share the video. Try as much as you can to share the video. Thank you so much, Lady Efeti Do. Thank you so much for being here. Lady Jake Nanga, you're welcome as well. Thank you so much for being here on time. It's hard to actually follow an online program and be that on time. But I want to really appreciate you for being, you ladies for being here on time. I can see a third person, please indicate with a comment so I can acknowledge your presence before we actually get into the program. I'm going to try not to take so much time, though this is a topic which has so much to talk about, but I'm going to try as much as possible to summarize and getting questions from you ladies might also help me talk about things which you want to hear, which I might not say. So if maybe there was something which you're willing to hear and I didn't say it, please do leave a question and I will be as happy as possible to answer your question. Thank you, Lady Omo. She says, good evening, beautiful lady. Thank you so much, Lady Omo. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Um, before we start today, it's a very, very sensitive topic. And um, I would like us to take a minute of silence for our babies who we did not meet. Okay, so we are going to be taking a minute of silence in a few seconds. Um, wherever you are, please just do this. Try to take a minute of silence for our babies whom we did not meet. And um, we are going to be starting soon. I'm just watching my time. Welcome, Lady Giselle. We are taking a minute of silence for our babies not seen from now. Okay, thank you all very much, ladies. We have to pay homage to them because as common as miscarriages are, maybe we have lost children without even knowing. Because if it is said that 10 to 20% of pregnancies end in a miscarriage and one out of three women would obviously experience a miscarriage at some point in their life, then we never know. So we have to pay homage to our children left that we did not meet, we did not see, or whatever the case, but it's a sensitive topic. Um, please, if you're here, please try as much as you can to share the life so that your friends can join us, other mothers can join us. The main aim while why Inyango is here is to help mothers, like help raise healthy, wealthy, and exemplary mothers. And when we talk about topics like this, it helps mothers to get more informed to be healthy. Um, I would like to give a little disclaimer before I start. I am no medical person. I'm just a mother who really loves to read and do a lot of research. And I'm using the fact that I'm a stay-at-home mom to do a lot of research about certain topics which I think mothers want to hear about. I'm a very inquisitive person. And everything I'm going to say here today are for educational purposes. And um, if you're experiencing any of them, I, I, I would advise that you see your doctor to get what actually matches to you because what everything that I'm going to say are from general perspectives, from other doctors, from other um, medical institutions and all that. So 
that said, let's get right into the topic. I'm going to be needing the, the help of my phone to help me trace what we are supposed to be talking about. So we are going to start right now. We are going to be talk, talking today on the topic miscarriage. It is not a topic that many people talk about. It is very, very, very common. But because women will hardly admit in public that they had a miscarriage, it, it seems like something which is so rare. But I would like us to know that, as I said before, 10 to 20% of all pregnancies, of all registered pregnancies, end up in a miscarriage. And one out of three women would obviously experience a miscarriage at some point in her life. So miscarriages are extremely common. And I would just like you to know that if you are maybe a mother that has experienced a miscarriage, miscarriages are mostly nobody's fault. So I'll get into detail about this. So um, first, let's define what miscarriage is. Miscarriage is the spontaneous unplanned exposure of a fetus from the womb before 20 weeks of pregnancy. It can both be physically or mentally painful. And most times miscarriages happen without the mother even knowing because it usually happens very early in the pregnancy. Like most times a woman might have um, heavy bleeding few days after the day her period is supposed to come. And she thinks it's a period of which she has already miscarried. So a lot of miscarriages happen without us, us knowing. So um, first, miscarriage is just um, one type of pregnancy loss. There are so many types of pregnancy loss, which I'm going to try to go through some of them right now, so that maybe we are aware that it's not just miscarriage. There are many other types of pregnancy loss. The first type of pregnancy loss I'll talk about, I'll be talking about 11 of them. The first one is chemical pregnancy. This is pregnancy that occurs after which maybe you've tested your urine at home and it showed positive, but without an ultrasound confirmation. You know that normally, most times when you know that you're pregnant, you would go to the hospital and uh, and then an ultrasound is done maybe two months or a few weeks into the pregnancy and then they'll see the, 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 the heartbeat of the embryo. That's what actually confirms that you're pregnant. But chemical pregnancy is like you did a pregnancy test at home and it showed positive and then you go now to your doctor for confirmation and then they don't see anything, which shows that you had lost the pregnancy before getting the confirmation from the doctor. Um, the next type of um, pregnancy loss I'd like to talk about is atopic pregnancy. Any pregnancy which is not implanted in your uterus, that is your womb, is a pregnancy loss. For atopic pregnancy, I know most of us have heard about it, it is pregnancy which the embryo implants itself in the fallopian tube instead of the womb. Okay, this is extremely um, uncommon but when it happens, usually causes a lot of symptoms that the mother will know a few weeks into the pregnancy that that baby is not in the right place because you might have bleeding, you might have a lot of other symptoms. So um, the third type of pregnancy loss I'd like to talk about is first trimester miscarriage. Now miscarriage comes into the picture. There are many different types of miscarriage as well because there is first trimester miscarriage, there is late miscarriage, there's missed miscarriage, yeah, so the third type of pregnancy loss I'm talking about here is first trimester um, miscarriage. As you hear it sound, it is miscarriage in the first semester, and this is also known as spontaneous abortion. Um, the fourth type of pregnancy loss I would like to talk about is blighted ovum. This is also known as an embryonic pregnancy. So these terms are really difficult to pronounce. Um, yeah, the gestation sac continues to grow while there's no baby inside. So the, the embryo either doesn't develop and then the, the, the sac where the baby is supposed to stay in continues to develop. So most times this um, blighted ovum is flushed. You're giving medications to flush the sac out so that you are okay and you can take in again. The fifth type of um, pregnancy loss I'd like to talk about is missed miscarriage. This is a um, miscarriage which is diagnosed by a doctor without any symptoms. So you can have a miscarriage without having any bleeding, without having any 
um, cramps, because those are the most common um, symptoms of miscarriage. So this one is missed miscarriage because you did not realize you had miscarriaged. It is the doctor, the doctor who diagnosed that you have miscarriage. Now the seat one is molar pregnancy. This is a situation which is caused when tissues, either in the uterus or the embryo or the placenta, develop in an abnormal way and it just doesn't develop into a baby. So it is a type of pregnancy loss as well. Here, the tissues are supposed to be removed, like it is obligatory that the tissues are removed because if they are not removed from you, they might cause further problems. Now on to number seven is second trimester miscarriage or late miscarriage. This is miscarriage which happens between 12 to 22 weeks of pregnancy. For number eight, as I said before, there are so many different types of pregnancy loss, which miscarriage is just one of them. Though the different types of miscarriage are here as well, there are three different types of miscarriage which are involved in these um, different types of pregnancy loss. So I will now go to um, number eight, which is preterm delivery from cervical insufficiency. This is when your cervix cannot hold the baby and it causes it to open before the time which is supposed to, to open and it either leads to premature birth or um, the baby comes out. So that is just what it is. Um, on to the ninth one. The ninth one is stillbirth. This is when a baby dies before 28 days um, or, sorry, this is when stillbirth is when a baby dies 28 days or less after delivery. This is considered pregnancy loss because the baby is not still a very big baby. The baby is still very young. So if you lose your baby below 28 days of you giving birth, it's called stillbirth, which is also considered as a type of pregnancy loss. Okay, now... Oh, sorry. <laughs> what I just talked about was neonatal infant loss. Yeah, neonatal, neonatal infant loss is when a baby who is born dies before they get to 28 days of them being alive. That is neonatal infant loss. And then stillbirth is when the baby dies in the womb after 20 weeks of pregnancy. Okay. Now on to number 11, which is the last one. This one is called therapeutic or selective abortion. This is when the couple decides to terminate the pregnancy because of some medical conditions. Maybe the baby did not form properly or the pregnancy is um, detrimental to the mother's health or anything that is unhealthy for the mother and the baby, which might lead the couple to decide to take away the baby. This one is really something which is most times very difficult for the couple to deal with. So those are the different types of pregnancy loss, which miscarriage is one of them. So now let's get into the causes of miscarriage. Most times mothers feel so guilty when they miscarriage. They feel like it was their fault. Maybe they would have done something different. Maybe there was something they could do. But I would really like to advise mothers that most times miscarriage is not your fault, which is the reason why I'm going to be telling you detailly some of the causes of miscarriage. So um, I'd like to let us know that eight out of 10 miscarriages happen between the first three months of pregnancy. And it is extremely common. I will keep repeating it here that miscarriages are extremely common. It's just that mothers usually don't talk about it. So now let's go to the first and most common cause of miscarriage. It is not what you did as a mother. It is not blamed on your husband. It is not blamed on your partner, but it is a, 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 it's, it's an abnormality in chromosomes. Like a normal embryo needs 46 chromosomes. Chromosomes are what build cells, right? In your body, you have a lot of chromosomes. And for a baby to be built after implantation, they need to have the right amount of chromosomes. A baby, a healthy baby would have 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mother and 23 from the father. These chromosomes will determine the baby's hair color, the eye color, and many different things about the baby. So if these chromosomes are not in place and they are not enough, 
that baby will come out. That's why on some of the facts which I sent today, I said, miscarriage is a way of the body eliminating what would have turned out to be an unhealthy pregnancy. Because imagine that a baby is formed without the right amount of chromosomes, that baby will have a lot of defects as a baby. So you need your baby needs the right chromosomes to be formed and to come out as a healthy baby. Excuse me. Once those chromosomes are not in place, even if it's, it's one that is missing from the ones that are supposed to be coming from the mother or it's one that is missing from the ones that are supposed to be coming from the father, that baby, there is a very high percentage for that baby not to be healthy. So chromosome abnormalities is one of the main causes of miscarriage, which is not a fault of the mother or the father. So please don't blame yourself if you miscarry. Okay, now we'll go into further um, causes of miscarriage. Another cause of miscarriage are lifestyle factors. Now, this is where um, it could be caused by something you are doing as a mother, which in most cases, it's not. So let's just talk about lifestyle factors. Something which causes miscarriage, some of the things which you might be doing, which might cause miscarriage is taking alcohol, smoking, taking caffeine. Caffeine is found in soft drinks, coffee, like taking a lot of caffeine. Because if you take maybe a cup of caffeine per day, it will not really cause a lot of problems. If you're, if you're taking two to five cups a day, then that can cause problems. But alcohol, smoking, um, taking caffeine, excessive maternal weight. That is if you as a woman, your weight is greater than the BMI, I talked about this in, a, this in our last session. If your weight is higher than it's supposed to be in a, in a BMI, which is higher than 30, you have a chance of having a miscarriage because you are overweight. Also, um, another um, lifestyle factor which might cause miscarriage is severe malnutrition. If you're not eating well, there is no way you can feed the baby wounds, which is in your body. And that can lead to a miscarriage. Thank you so much. I can see some new people here. I can see Lady Giselle Itala. She says, watching live. Thank you so much for being here. I can see Lady Tambe Doka. She says, the boss lady is looking radiant. Thank you so much. I can see Nikki Raj. She says, I'm here, my lady. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, let's go on with the causes of miscarriage. Now, I'm going to be calling some medical names, but if you want to know more about them, just jot them down. I always tell you, please always have your book. I always have my book with me because there are lots of things which you cannot keep in your head altogether. So I try to jot things down so it guides me when I'm explaining what I'm explaining to you ladies. And you ladies as well have to have your book so that if there is something which you do not understand, you can easily jot. And at the end of the session, you can ask questions and you can be more clear about these things. Okay. Um, the next thing, I, um, which is a cause of miscarriage, is incompetent cervix. Normally, for you to be pregnant, your cervix, which is the road to your womb, needs to be closed. In a normal woman, your cervix is always closed, tight and closed. When you're pregnant, it is tight and closed until the day which is your delivery day, like the day which your baby is supposed to come out, it starts dilating it starts opening gently that's when you hear about the three centimeters two finger whatever all those terms that's when you hear about it but before um that day your cervix is closed and a lot of people think that um maybe some little thing can hurt your baby like if you imagine the sack in which your baby is inside it is well protected. Like God thought about it so well when he was creating us. The sack is so well um, protected that harm can hardly befall your baby. That's why after seeing the causes, I will list a, a few of the of things which cannot lead to miscarriage, but most women think it can. Okay, I was talking about cervical um, incompetence which is when your cervix is not closed enough to keep your baby inside. Now, maternal age is one other thing which can lead to miscarriage. For women who are older, like above 35, like going to 40, the risk of a miscarriage increases right up to 50%. So miscarriage in women older than 35 is higher. Like 50% of women who get pregnant at the age of 40, 35 and above have the chance of having a miscarriage. Now, um, uterine 
abnormalities, that's another cause. Hormonal irregularities, your hormones are supposed to be intact for you, for your baby to be kept healthy. But if they are not, then there's a chance of miscarriage. Also, improper implantation. Um, when maybe you actually get pregnant and your implantation is not done well, it might lead to a miscarriage. It is implanted where it is not supposed to be implant implanted or your womb is not strong enough to hold the baby. That is all what improper implantation is all about. Um, other health issues in the mother, severe kidney problems, diabetes, severe diabetes, and other health issues can also cause um, miscarriage. As I said, before, I think I said it in one of our facts. I don't know if I did. Um, a miscarriage might be an indication of another health issue that you have. So other health issues in the mother can lead to miscarriage. So if you have had two or more miscarriages, it's usually advised that you take a couple of tests. Though maybe when you had one miscarriage, it's not that um, recommended that you go for tests because it could just be from um, chromosome abnormalities, which just happens by chance. Like it is not medically, there's no scientific um, research that has been done to prove why chromosomes might not um, meet the normal requirements and all. Um, also, other, thing, other things which can cause mis miscarriage are taking drugs or supplements apart from prenatal vitamins. When you're pregnant, you have to be very, very cautious. I've heard of cases where someone was telling me she has not seen her period for days, for a few weeks, about three weeks. And then all of a sudden her period came. And I was like, what did you do? She said she took one drug, she was feeling the type, so she took one drug for infection. And her period came. That is a case of miscarriage. When I heard it in my mind, I was like, this cannot be normal. This lady was pregnant. At times, we need to be very careful with the drugs we take. If you're trying to get pregnant, you have to be very, very cautious. Like your doctor has to be your best friend. Before you take any drug, you have to try to like communicate with your doctor because you might be losing your baby with a very careless mistake which you would have stopped, right? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I haven't heard of it before. I haven't heard of it. I haven't heard of it before. Lady Giselle is saying, I don't know if in Cameroon they do chromosome tests on pregnant women. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. When I was pregnant, you know, um, in Cameroon or in Africa, um, the medical, um, I don't know how to call it, is made to seem like some mix, mystic that if they explain to you, you can't understand. I cannot tell if they did a chromosome test on me while I was pregnant, because most times they don't explain you those things, of which we need to know. That's part of the reason why I come up with these topics and we talk about them. Because when I give you some knowledge about it, when you go to your doctor, you'll be able to ask him or her more questions. When you go to your gynecologist or your pediatrician, you'll be able to have more questions to ask them because your knowledge base is somewhat higher, okay? But I don't really know if they do that. Maybe they do, but they don't tell us. Um, okay, the last thing I said was taking drugs other than prenatal vitamins can cause miscarriage as well. Okay, I said this one in um, the facts which I sent today that having sex, walking out, working, stress, what else? Um, you falling while you're pregnant or maybe something hitting your stomach while you're pregnant cannot lead to miscarriage. As I said before, the, the amoebic sac, like your womb is so well protected, like the tissue in your womb is so strong that any little thing cannot get to your baby. So those things cannot lead to miscarriage except in extreme cases, like it's, if it happens, then it's very rare. But in normal cases, those things cannot lead to miscarriage. If maybe um, you have a miscarriage when you're walking out, then maybe you have another issue, which walking out just combined with it to make you miscarry. But normally those things cannot cause miscarriage. Okay, I'm going to be going on to the symptoms of miscarriage. The number one symptom of miscarriage is bleeding and bleeding, spotting, 
bleeding or spotting and cramps. But as we all know, as mothers, we usually have cramps when we are on our periods and we have cramps a lot of times you have cramps when you're in, when you're when your baby's implanting when you're having implantation you have cramps when you're relating you have some slight cramps so it is not easy to tell though these are the first um symptoms of miscarriage so if you're pregnant if you're a few weeks into pregnancy and you're having these pains and you're seeing spottings or bleeding please try to consult your doctor because if you do early enough maybe your baby can be saved right um, another um, symptom of um, miscarriage is abnormal pain, low back ache. You might have fever. You might feel weak. Yeah, those are some of the symptoms of miscarriage. But it is just advice that when you're pregnant, as I said before, your doctor should be your friend. So that anything that happens, don't ask people around you, right? If you want to ask someone, then that person should be someone who has some basics in these things like for example a mother can reach out to me and say that i know she's pregnant and she says i've been having some pains like abdominal pain under my tummy the first thing i advise you is go to your doctor but now if probably you have such pains and you call maybe your old mother or your grandmother whom you're staying with she might not tell you that or maybe you tell a friend who doesn't have a lot of knowledge in these things they might not tell you that they might be like it could be normal let's just wait a few days to see if things are going to get okay of which that might be you miscarriaging and something would have been done in the early stage and then nothing was done and you lose your baby so please if you are having any symptoms any signs any pains any of these symptoms while you're pregnant try as much as you can to communicate with someone who you know has some medical backing and know about these things. Okay, now, after a miscarriage, there are some diagnosis, there are some ways which miscarriage can be diagnosed and there are some treatments which can be given. Though most times it's not required, but it is important sometimes to take these treatments. Diagnosis of miscarriage can be pelvic exams or ultrasounds. Ultrasounds is when you lie down and use the machine on your tummy to check if your baby is still there. If you have had a miscarriage, they will not find anything there. They will not see the heartbeat of the baby, which is what normally indicates that there is no baby there. And um, occasionally, when you are actually realized to have miscarriage, a DNC, which is dilation and curate, curettage is done or dilation and extraction is done to remove those extra tissues from your body. But most times people usually leave it to be done for the tissues to come out naturally, which is very possible. It might take two weeks or more. Um, also, in some hospitals, when after a miscarriage, they, they can give you routines to check your blood to see whether the H HCG levels have gone down. HCG is the hormone which is which rises so much in your blood when you're pregnant. So after a miscarriage, they can be checking your blood to see how the levels of HCG have gone down so that you can so that you can know when you can conceive or when you can start trying again. Um, also, some tests can be done on you. And if you've had more than two miscarriages, that is two and above, most times they'll send you to do a couple of tests so that they know if it is something which is wrong with you, which is causing the miscarriage, or they check your chromosomes, they check your hormones, they check your cervix, they check your womb, they check everything to make sure that you are okay to carry a baby. Um, also, now, let's talk about how you can prevent um, a miscarriage. Now, you preventing miscarriage would de depend on two things. Are you already pregnant? Or are you still trying to get pregnant? If you're already pregnant, there is little you can do to prevent miscarriage. Though, yes, if you're taking a call, you can stop those bad habits. You can stop taking a call. You can stop smoking. You can stop taking a lot of caffeine which are the same things that um, apply to you preventing miscarriage if you are still trying to get pregnant. You're trying to get pregnant, try as much as possible to stop smoking. Try as much as possible to avoid alcohol. Try as much as possible to avoid caffeine. Um, if you are overweight, try to lose some weight. 
Um, for ladies who are older than 35, you can try an IVF. An IVF is a situation where sperm is actually taken and an egg and it's fertilized outside of you before putting it inside of you. Like they actually check to see that the embryo is doing well before it is put into you for implantation. Yeah. Also, another advice I'd like to give, which can help you prevent miscarriage, is taking prenatal vitamins. They are very, very important because one of the things which cause miscarriage is if your body realizes that that baby is not going to be healthy. And one thing which can prevent your baby from being an unhealthy baby is prenatal vitamins because they, they nourish your body enough to be ready to handle the baby when the baby comes, right? Yeah. So that is it. A question which women mostly ask is, can I get pregnant after a miscarriage? Yes, that is positive. You can. It's 7% of women get pregnant after miscarriage and they have healthy babies after a miscarriage. Though 1% of women may have more miscarriages after one miscarriage, but it is normally seen that most women will get pregnant again after a miscarriage. So don't get worried if you've had a miscarriage before, it is very possible for you to get pregnant. I have seen cases of women who have had miscarriage and they had healthy pregnancies and they got pregnant again and again and they had their beautiful babies. So if you have had a miscarriage before, don't be discouraged, keep trusting, keep hoping, you can obviously get pregnant. Now, a complicated question which is mostly asked is, when can I have sex after miscarriage? Or when can I start trying to have a baby again after miscarriage? Now, this will greatly depend on a lot of factors, which are, one, the duration of the pregnancy before miscarriage, um, two, the HCG hormones um, level in your blood, um, three, if the pregnancy tissues are all out, and um, those are the main things which are to be considered before you start thinking of maybe trying again. Before you want to try again, you want to make sure that um, you want to make sure that your hormones, the HCG hormone, is all gone from your body. You want to make sure that you are ovulating again. You want to make sure that all the tissues of pregnancy which were in your uterus are all out that is your womb are all out because if they are not out it will not lead to a healthy pregnancy most times after a miscarriage like our midwife was talking about your uterus is scarred imagine a situation where okay for example you go to the farm and um you plant a seed of corn right let me use this very silly example you plant a seed of corn um normally if that corn starts growing and you go and uproot it. The soil won't be flat like when it when there was no corn planted in that place, right? I think I'm making sense. The 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 the, the soil in that place won't be flat like when nothing had been planted. So when when a baby comes out in the case of a miscarriage, the womb is normally scarred, and doctors usually advise before doctors will advise for you to stay six to three months, but there is no, <laughs> there is no, there is no research that has shown that um, a, a woman should wait three months or wait six months. As far as you can overlate, you can get pregnant, right? But you need to understand that even in a case where in normal day life, in your life, you must have planted something. <laughs> That's why I use the example. Jackie's laughing at my example. In your life, you must have planted something, whether as a kid or as a grown up, you must have planted something. And when you uproot something that was planted, even a weed or grass, you realize that the soil in that place is not the same. At times, even when you plant, you need to cover the soil and then smash it to make sure that it's, it's inside. And maybe the birds don't pick it up. Right? So, your womb might be scarred. That is why they will mostly advise that you stay a bit longer before taking in again. My light is failing me. I'm so sorry about this. I'm hoping that it comes on, <laughs> but it's taking so much time to do so. It's going to come on soon and the image is going to get better. I'm sorry. Um, so most times you have to 
just try to check your hcg levels like go for routine tests if it's done in your hospital if you don't know whether it is done the best way to deal with these things in africa is to ask questions because most times if you don't ask questions they will not tell you anything and if you don't ask questions and push for things that you want nobody will tell you that this thing is right for you right so you have to try as much as possible as you're getting knowledge here try to ask questions ask questions to other mothers ask questions to your doctors ask questions to your gynecologist ask questions to your pediatrician like anytime you get a chance to be with them ask questions as many as possible like my midwife used to drive me you used to tell me please go it's not only you that we have because i asked a lot of questions um okay the light is on i think it's a little bit better now <sighs> not so much okay i think we can do with this um so that is it if all the pregnancy tissues are out from you and your hcg hormones are all down and you're fine you're ovulating there is a high chance that you can get pregnant a research showed that couples who start trying for pregnancy few weeks after have a greater chance of getting pregnant so don't stay there wallowing in the pain and in the guilt and in everything of miscarriage i know it is painful right i cannot um i cannot say i understand what it means to have a miscarriage but but at least i know it's painful i know what it means to have a child so i can detect a little how painful it can be for you to know that you have a baby growing in your tummy and then all of a sudden the baby is no more there so don't waste time um, feeling guilt feeling pressure feeling everything feeling down start trying right start trying and you stand a greater chance of getting pregnant though the fact that your uterus might be scarred might make it in a way that you might not be able to conceive or you might not be able to have a good implantation but there is no harm in trying okay keep trying keep hoping and you will sure have your miracle baby so i have kind of a last on everything i wanted to talk about on miss courage please if you have questions i would like you to drop them i thank god so much that i am on time i didn't want to spend so much time here um okay let me talk about this one thing if you have any questions please do try as much as possible as you can to drop your questions but let me say this there are three main um post miscarriage treatments right the first one is the weight you allow you you wait and you allow the tissues the pregnancy tissues to get out of you naturally which is the case if you had a normal miscarriage in a case where you had a polar pregnancy a topic pregnancy blight ovum and some other types of um miscarriage um of pregnancy loss that i talked about you might need to go through a d and c or a d and e for the tissues to be removed but the first treatment for miscarriage is the natural weight for the tissues to go away naturally to come out naturally the second way is true medications sometimes after a miscarriage you can they can give you your doctor can prescribe medications to flush out those remaining tissues of your system and the last way is through dilation and curettage or dilation and extraction whereby an instrument is sent into your into your body for these tissues to be removed this one is a little bit risky because the tissues actually scraped out of you and it can leave more scars right so those are the three main ways which um which um um a miscarriage can be treated <laughs> is lady jackie's question that got me stammering like that i'm trying to answer our question i'm trying to see what i'm saying d and e is dilation and extraction it's almost it's almost the same thing as d and c which is dilation and cure and curettage right d and e is dilation and extraction please if you have any more questions do leave them so we can answer them um while i'm waiting for your questions let's go ahead to announce the winners of our quiz for yesterday like i was amazed at the answers 
the main reason for this quiz is to push mothers to go and study. And I am liking the results. Like when you look at the answers in the comment section, you see that even though the mothers, some of the mothers did not watch the video because maybe they thought it was long or they think it might be complicated to get the, the answers from there. They actually went and read about it, which is a good thing. We are learning. We are winning. <laughs> you get right. We are learning. We are winning. We are helping um, the businesses of mothers to grow. So it's just a win-win situation. And I would like to use this opportunity to say that if you are a mom in business, no matter how small your business is, you can be a sponsor on our quiz. And I'm giving the opportunity for five more mothers in business to sponsor the Nyango quiz for free. So all you have to do is have something to give us prizes, a first prize, second prize, and a third prize, right? You don't pay for the videos we would, we would make for the adverts. And I'm really liking it because the mothers who we have done their adverts are really getting a lot of customers. I'm getting, I'm getting their thank you. We are getting their, their reviews on the fact that some of their, their prize winners come to their places and they, they, they intend to pay for other things, which is a good, good thing. So if you are a mom in business, no matter how small your business is, if you're selling something, you can sponsor the quiz, no matter what it is. Just be ready to give something and help mothers learn. Um, okay, I'll be waiting for your questions, right? Lady Jackie says, oh, thank you, Madam Ayok. Thank you too for being here. I see some more people. If there are people who were here from the beginning, you are welcome again. If there are people who are just coming, you're still welcome. I'm trying to, to spot where I wrote the names of the winners, where I wrote them down. Like, hmm, the answers were really, really good. Like, we kept on reading the answers when we're just going, wow, wow. Like, mothers are really learning, and it gives me so much joy to know that mothers are acquiring knowledge because for you to have a healthy pregnancy have a healthy baby live a healthy wealthy and exemplary example life you need to be studious you need to learn things you need to be ready to learn right i got the place where i wrote the names <laughs> okay before i call up the winners hmm. Like your answers, I just think about your answers and I'm like so contented. Thank you so much. Please, until the winners are announced, we'd like to see more answers, right? Because when somebody comes to that particular question, they'll go to the comment section to read the answers, even though they don't watch the question. Right source capability. Yes, it can cause miscarriages. But now... Here in Africa, tests for these things are not done. So I'm sorry. I just jumped into Lady Giselle's question. I'm so sorry. Um, she asked, can Rice's incapability in couples cause miscarriage? Yes, in some cases it can, but there is no research that actually shows that it can, right? Like looking at a majority of couples, like from researches that have been done, there is no medical research that has really proven that it can be done, but in very few cases it can. So it's just advice for couples to do as much as they can to prevent it, take treatments for it if they do have it in place. Okay, so I'll get on to the winners of the quiz. Before I go to the winners, I wanted to do a little shout out to our top fans. Like, it is the top fans who actually push the page so much. The top fans are the ones sharing the most. They're the ones commenting the most. They're the ones liking the most. And I thought to say thank you to you ladies. Um, our top fans for now are the first top fan, Jackie Enanga. Like her support is out of this world. Um, okay, Lady Jackie is asking if exercise can cause miscarriage. There is no scientific proven research to show that you exercising can cause miscarriage. I said it among the things which cannot cause miscarriage. Exercise cannot cause miscarriage, except if you're taking it to the extreme, which normally a pregnant lady cannot take exercise to an extreme because you feel tired, you feel weak. So exercise cannot cause miscarriage. Um, I was talking about, I was giving a shout out to our top fans. The first person being Lady Jackie Enanga, and then she pops in equations, actually show that she's a top fan. She's always here. She's always very active. Thank you so much 
for all you do for Inyangu and thank you for impacting the lives of mothers because by sharing a post, just a post, you are touching the life of a mother. I believe that so strongly. Um, the next person is Lady Betty Enanga. Sorry, she's Betty Bright on Facebook. <laughs> but she's also an Enanga. I don't know the thing about Enangas. I have three Enangas as top fans. Can you imagine? They are just really wonderful people. It's like that name is just something. Um, the next person is Lady Juan Chinyeye Onua. She is another support system who is out of this world. She's a very intelligent lady. I love her being around. I know that if she's not here today, it's because she's really tied out somewhere or she's traveling because she's always here. Thank you so much, Lady Juan. Another um, lady who is a top fan is Lady Enanga Efite. I don't know if I pronounced that well, or is it Feti? That's what I know. But the name is actually spelled E-F-I-T-E. Lady Enanga Efite, I think. Thank you so much, Lady Enanga. Um, another top fan is Lady Jam Meekness. Thank you so much, Lady Meekness, for always being here, for always sharing our posts. Like, I really, really appreciate And I'm sure some mother somewhere appreciates as well. Um, another top fan is Lady Ding. Dingo Marie Iren. I don't know her personally. Most of our top fans have had to speak to them personally. But this particular lady, she's always sharing the post. I've been sent her a friend request because I try to connect with our top fans as much as I can because they are doing something which is great for us, right? So thank you, Lady Iren. Lady Giselle Itala is another top fan. Like It's like she just discovered the page and since she came here, she has been so active and she's giving some beautiful contributions and and she's she's giving so much um value to the page and i thank you so much for doing that thank you so much lady giselle lady Jobe delbis is another top fan thank you so much lady jo lady delbis she's always sharing always um always um liking always commenting thank you so much ladies lisa suzanne is another top fan she's my friend on facebook um thank you so much lady suzanne for sharing and commenting and for all the good work you're doing lady Grishella is another top fan most of them are young moms which is what makes me so happy that they are interested in learning and being healthy moms and raising healthy children and being healthy in general um thank you so much lady Grishella. and um Lastly, but not the least, Lady Anita Fonlon. She's another top fan and she's a spectacular lady who has always been here sharing. I'm giving a shout out to you all ladies today and I say thank you very much for all the love you've been showing to this page and thank you so much for being deliberate about raising healthy, wealthy and exemplary mothers. Now, on to our winners for the Nyango Moms Quiz 3rd edition. Wow, I've been talking so much, my throat is dry. Okay, let's get on to it. Who else is waiting here? Okay, Lady Jackie and Anga say it's Irene. Okay, I know her. She's actually a big sister. My sisters are so great. They're always supporting, and I'm so grateful to all of them. You all are my sisters, right? And I'm so grateful for everything you do. For me, raising healthy, wealthy, and exemplary mothers is like what I live for. And if I see anyone who supports me in doing that, I hold them deep in my heart. Um, okay, I've been putting you ladies on suspense too long. <laughs> Let me announce the winners already, okay? I don't know, Lady Jolie Pet Miss Lee says she's a top fan. I I went on to check all the top fans and I couldn't see your name. And I myself, I was wondering, I'm like, but why is she not among? Because I know there are some people that I really see that they share, like um. Lady Jolie Pet Miss Lynn, she always shares. Lady Sonita, I don't know her other name on, on, on Facebook. Lady Sonita, there are two Sonitas actually who are actually sharing. One is a friend, one is my friend from back in the days in the university, and one is an Inyango mom. There are really so many ladies who are sharing, but it's Facebook who chooses top fans. So until they do their math and they send, excuse me, they send these names, I don't know. Okay. On to the winners. Please, nobody should correct me again. Mm, nobody should correct me again. Let me announce them. <laughs> I've been keeping everyone on suspense for too long. For the first prize winner, drum roll. 
Lady Gisdell Itala is the one who won the first prize. Please congratulate her in the comment section. She's there watching us live right now. Tell her congratulations. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave something to congratulate her. Lady Gisdell Itala, you are the winner of the first prize. And um, on to the second prize. This lady is new on the quiz. There are people who have been commenting on the quiz from time to time, and I've noticed them. But this particular lady, <laughs> this particular lady is new on the quiz, and boom, she wins. Like she sent her answers, um, um, uh, answer among the first three correct answers. Like almost all the answers, I'm saying almost all the answers were correct. But now the first three people who give the correct answer get to win. But now what Inyongo does is we note those people who are frequent with answering our questions. And at the end of the year, right, we are going to have beautiful gifts for you ladies, like people who consistently leave answers on our quiz. Like the surprise we are planning for you, like you don't yet know, like let me not talk about it, like I might be able to spill. Let's go to the second prize winner right now. On to the second prize winner, we have Lady Christy Mengot. That is her name on Facebook. I don't know her personally. I did the normal routine that I do. I sent her a friend request and she accepted, thank God. So the second prize winner is Lady Christy Mengot, who goes away with the collagen um, cream and a serum. Lady Giselle Itala goes away with this beautiful bathing gel. Like, Rubia Cosmetics has told me about this bathing gel and I'm just holding myself. I told the lady, the CEO, that I've been using a particular one and I don't want to change. And I'm, when I look at the bathing gel and I read everything that it does, I'm just holding myself not to use it. So Lady Giselle Itala is the one who won that bathing gel. It's wonderful. And um, on to the third prize winner. I don't know if it is that this lady is just lucky or is that she's just so consistent. That is why she always wins. I think she has claimed, she claimed one of the prizes for the first edition. The second edition, she won something. I think she won the third prize, right? If I'm not mistaken, I think she won the third prize. And then boom. The third edition, she wins the third prize again. I don't know. Is she just being lucky or... No, she's very consistent. She's extremely consistent. So... <laughs> so... I think it's just consistency which is making her to always pop up. Like the first prize, the lady who won the second prize was not is not in Cameroon. So when I asked her to choose someone that this particular lady is the one she chose to go and claim the prize for her because she herself even other people are realizing that this particular lady is so consistent thank you so much for this beautiful work and the third prize winner i know she's going to be surprised <laughs> is lady tambe dokas again is lady tambe dokas if you can win a prize like this six times in a row inyango has a big package for you so keep being consistent, keep doing what you're doing, keep learning. And I'm sure your little boy is gaining so much from these things you're learning. Right. So there we have it. There we have our three um, winners, the first prize winner, the second prize winner, and the third prize winner. First prize winner, Lady Giselle Itala. Second prize winner, Lady Christine Mengot. And third prize winner, Lady Tambe Dokas. I would like to remind us again, mothers, that on the Nyango quiz, there are no losers. That's the good thing about the quiz. There are no losers. It's either you win or you learn. So please do well to just watch the video. It gives you a higher chance of winning because as I said, your answers to be sh sh should be short and straight to the point. Not because I don't want you to express all your knowledge, but because if your answers are short and straight to the point, it makes it easy for us to pick the winners and even makes it easy for you to win something. <laughs> because if you know what you want to write about, you won't have to explain from now till tomorrow. Give it short, simple, and your answers are there. And most of the times people who watch the video have the shortest and the best answers, right? So do try to watch the videos. You are gaining knowledge, right? You're gaining some knowledge which will help you. If it doesn't help you today, you help you tomorrow. If it doesn't help you tomorrow, 
you will speak to your mother someday and they'll ask you a certain question and before you know you're just spitting knowledge you're just spitting <laughs> you're just spitting knowledge and you're just coming out and then at a certain point you'll be like huh am i the one speaking that's the thing when you keep on acquiring knowledge you might not know the impact until maybe a case comes where somebody asks you a question about that particular thing so keep learning it's not for waste there is no knowledge which is a waste excuse me okay thank you so much lady julie pet miss lean lady giselle itala says yes dear we are gaining knowledge and impacting others yeah please try to recommend in yango to other mothers i really pray for a day that mothers will come to our page and find a solution to all their motherhood issues right all their motherhood issues and more and then that day i might be able to rest <laughs> Yo, motherhood is so big that you could use a lifetime and more to talk about issues with motherhood. Okay, um, a lot of mothers asked us to talk about um, clef, clef lip and palate, which I'm going to be talking about in subsequent um, in a subsequent live session. But for next week, we'll be talking all about menstruation. If possible, you can send to my inbox or to the page's inbox. I'm Larissa Livella on all social media platforms. You can send to my inbox questions about menstruation or what you want to learn about menstruation. And it will help us to narrow out what we want to talk about. Or you can write me if you have my number. Or you can leave what you want to learn about menstruation in your comment section. You can suggest topics which you want to learn about in our inbox on the Nyango inbox. Just write the topics there. We'll obviously get them and we'll talk about them. Miscarriage is being talked about today because of all the mothers who we reached out to and asked the topic which they want to learn about, I can say 80% said miscarriage. That is why we're talking about miscarriage. We want to talk about topics which mothers are interested in because we can do all the research which we are doing, but most times this research will give us information about mothers in the Western world. Most times African mothers don't open up, which makes it difficult for us to give them what they want. So please, you can reach out to us in any way. You can write me on WhatsApp if you have my number. You can leave suggestions of topics which we want to learn about in our inbox on the Nyango page. You can leave them on my messenger. As I said before, I'm Larissa Livella on all social media platforms leave what you want to learn and we'll talk about it if you don't have time to do the research yourself let us do it right we won't say everything but we'll give you a knowledge base in which by the time you go to the hospital and maybe you're facing a certain challenge you would you would be able to understand your doctor more and ask your doctor more questions which will help you to understand what you're going through and most times when you understand what you're going through it makes it easy for you to solve it. But if you have a problem that you don't understand, it makes it really difficult for you to solve it. Imagine a non-math student giving a problem on differentiation and integration. You are lost because you don't know what that is. But give maybe a little short student a Shakespearean question or a poem for them to interpret. They'll do it well because that is what they know about. That is why we are trying to impact and keep putting in knowledge. Thank you all ladies so much who are here. Lady Julie Pet Miss Lean, Lady Giselle Itala, Lady Jackie Enanga, Lady Efeti Do. I don't know if she's still here. Um, who else? I'm trying to call out everyone who was here or who is still here. I see four people. Lady Omar. Lady Omar, please, if you still have my number, can you please write me? It's like I lost your number. I've been looking for your number in my phone, but I can't I can't find it. I'm sorry. I wanted to reach out to you. I looked for your number. I couldn't find it. So please, if you have my number, Lady Omo, and you're still watching, please reach out to me on WhatsApp so we can catch up. <laughs> okay. Again, I'd like to thank Lady Efeti Do, Lady Jackie Enanga, Lady Omo, Cash, Lady Giselle Itala, Lady Tambe Dorcas, Nikki Rash, my, my, my fashion plug, <laughs> Lady... Julie Pet Miss Clean. And I think those are all the people who have indicated that they are around with comments. If you're around and you didn't indicate, it's okay. Thank you so much for being here. If you're watching us from YouTube, thank you so much for being here. 
Wow, Lady Juan, Golefak. Okay. Wow, okay. I can see Lady Christelle now. <laughs> you see, I said there are people who are watching who have not indicated. I really, really like to acknowledge your presence because it's not easy to create time to be here. And when you create time to be here, I really, really appreciate it. So at times I'll call out all the names. I don't know, maybe there's going to be some day where there are going to be so many people viewing that I won't be able to call out the names, but it's something I like to do, like acknowledge, acknowledge and acknowledge because it's not easy to create time to be here, though it's something which is for your good and my good, but creating time to be here and actually show your support is not something which is easy. So thank you, Lady Christelle Alloy for being here. Thank you, Lady Juan Golefak. Wherever you're watching from, if you're watching from YouTube, thank you so much for being here. If you are here watching live or you're going to be watching this later, thank you so much for taking our time to be here. If you've not yet liked or um, subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do well to do that because we are posting a lot of information, informative content there as well. So that will be goodbye from me to have a beautiful evening and may God bless you all. And I pray that no mother here or no mother whom you know or no mother in your cycle or no mother who is watching me or ever watch this video should experience a miscarriage because it's so, so painful. But we have to understand that miscarriages are so, so common. So if it happens to you, don't blame yourself. Go on, get up, get strong and keep trying. Most people will not know about miscarriage until they have experienced it. So today I gave an opportunity to women to actually hear about it, even though they have not experienced it. So none of us shall experience a miscarriage in the name of Jesus. And none of us or anyone around us shall experience a miscarriage. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Please, on some days, try to bring your partners to watch us as well. So that they know the information, they know what you're getting here, so that it helps them as well to learn, okay? So most times we want to watch if you're at home, if we're not talking about a topic like this though, like next week we'll be talking about menstruation. If you have some little girls around you, please bring them on, right? So that they can come and learn something. We'll be talking about menstrual hygiene because 28th is menstrual hygiene day. So if you have some little girls in your compound whom you think they are in the age, 12 years above, ladies, girls these days see their period very early. So if you have some young girls around, bring them. But on a day like this, we're talking about topics which involve sex. It's not so advisable that they are around if they are much younger. But it is really good that you, you sometimes send the link to your partner so that they can watch. Because some of the information that we give here, you alone as a woman, it's difficult for you to follow them. If your partner is there watching as well, they can help you, guide you when you forget. They can tell you, did you remember that we were watching that thing like that? They said that this, 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 and that. Or you can push him as well to do some more research, okay? So try as much as you can to hold your partner's hand sometimes and bring them here. This is not just for women. This is for women. This is for men. Because it's men who make us pregnant, right? So there are things which they are supposed to know as well. So thank you all, ladies. And it will be goodbye from me. To have a beautiful evening. And God bless you all. Let's keep impacting. Let's keep spreading the word. Let's keep raising healthy, wealthy, and exemplary mothers. And let's build healthy moms with healthy homes. Have a beautiful evening.